Awesome. Hi, everybody. This is Kathy L. Murphy, the Pulpit Queen, reporting live from my little cabin in the woods, Murphy's Law. And I've got um, some really special people here jumping on board. We've got a fabulous group of girls. Uh, the ladies, um, they're going to be introduced in a minute. I was going to see if Johnny was going to sign on. She's not here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go on with Winona and Jay. And they are the, and I thought, ladies. They have got so much going on. They have featured me. I think they featured you too, Mandy, right? Yes. Yep. And we are thrilled to have you here. So we want you to have the whole time. So go ahead and uh, tell us your story. Hello, everyone. I'm Jade. Um, and I'm well known up. Yeah, so let's do that first off, right? So we, yeah. So we remember the high five. Oh, high, is that the Ooh, Ooh, Even on our own podcast, we have like four podcasts. <laughs> and we forget all and the we time. Forget. Do you know how many times we've done a podcast? And, and we got like to the very end. We're like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm Jade and that's Winona. <laughs> <laughs> we remember our own um, picture. Smile. Okay. One more. One more. You're looking good. Okay, go ahead. That was like my favorite thing. I know, right? For Posing for pictures. And I'm like, wait, wait, then I'll go with my coffee. I hope that I didn't walk <laughs> on my coffee. Okay, I'm sorry. We're back. Uh, we were going to talk to you guys today about like branding and making a bigger brand because that's kind of what we do. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we were like, okay, so we could do the really fun one where we just talk to y'all, or we could do the professional one where we have an actual PowerPoint slide. And we, no, no, it. we want the fun one. Oh, We're okay, because fun. Okay, because I was like, I can't put on my you guys are into big time fun. So okay. let's go ahead and do that. Let's do fun, y'all. All right. Let's so first of all, um, I wanted to say that we were going to make this more interactive. So we definitely want some people in the chat. Like, let me pull up the chat to make right. sure we're so ready we're just, for that. We're just going yeah. like, we want there people we in the chat. And no chat up. That's what <laughs> So yeah, we want people in the chat. We want to hear what you're thinking of, about. So okay. first of all, I wanted to know, like, who, who here is a writer? And who are our readers? Hold on. Let me get the sort. The, well, I'm both. You, I'm a reader and a writer. Well, I think like they basically to to read to, is to write. Basically. Yeah. All right, cool. I think every reader becomes a writer. But anyway, so the reason we were asking is because we really gonna need the support of some readers in here, okay, y'all? Uh, yes, yes. Because um, as writers, we can tell you what we think all day, but as readers, <laughs> you're y'all actually know. As, um, <laughs> as in computer terms, you're the end user. Oh my okay. God. You're welcome. Yes. yes. Been reading some good books, computer books. Yes. I'm sorry. You can't be dancing. That's no, no. Uh, this is recorded. It is. It is. So I guess we've already introduced ourselves and we're going to talk about uh, what genres do y'all write? First, yeah, let's start with what genres. Mine was memoir. 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 Historical mm -hmm. fiction. Ooh. You can say that's historical yeah. fiction. No, oh, no, I write historical fiction, but it's set in the 60s and 70s, and that's historical now. Yes, <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my word. <laughs> Temporary for me. It feels weird for that to be historical. historical right? By the way, uh, that Joanne, must mean my dad is getting old, and I'm not excited about that. <laughs> okay. I write, I you write, write the women's fiction. Women's fiction, nice. I just jumped into that. How is that, by the way? Oh, I'm it. sorry. I got distracted. Well, this is my not, bad. This my is bad. Not, we are not interviewing. We are doing a thing. We are. Okay, so we're going to talk about I, I, I write. Um, I write self development books and uh, self growth books. Fabulous. Okay, can you tell me the name of that book? Because yeah, we, we uh, yes, absolutely. I have four of them. I have four of them. Beyond the Book Club, uh, Acting Lessons for Living. Acting Lessons for Living Guided, you know, a guided journal. And I just uh, published my musings, which is a guided journal too. Fabulous. And I'm very excited to see young people here because I've been working on chain, you know, on expanding my demographic to young folks and have been working with Instagram and TikTok a little bit. And I want to hear what you have to say about that. And you know, uh, for writers and to oh. hit a younger demographic, I'm trying to target like mid twenties to late thirties instead of just uh, 
I and I'm, do, I, I'm starting to do it, but I'm dying to hear what you have to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure if we're the social the, media the queens, queens not, but, uh, but we are, we are branding. So let's lean from brands that y'all think about like right off the top of your head and why they mean, why they mean something to you. Coca-Cola. And yeah. why is that important to you? Because I need Diet Coke to get through the day. <laughs> okay, exactly. exactly. All right. Anyone else? Trader Joe's. Oh, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> you need to, you need to survive. <laughs> that gets me through the day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm going to say Lavazza Crema Italian coffee beans. <laughs> <laughs> that's my, that's my go to. Thanks to Johnny Bernhard. Okay. All right. I, I feel like I need to go to your house for coffee. All no, right. Do you know? I wish I had a duly noted pen so I could write that down and remind myself mm -hmm. when I'm in Texas, I'm coming to coffee. Okay. okay, I'm sorry. I'm moving on because yes. we're going to try to keep it professional and on time. The <laughs> professional, <laughs> but that not on time, the professional part. So, so when you think about an author and then you think about a brand, like, what do you, do you think, think about? Do you think that there's any authors out here that actually have a brand? And if so, who are they and what are they worth? Diana Gabaldon with Outlander. Oh, okay. yeah. Yes. Uh, James Patterson has established a really big brand. Yeah. So, yep. how about Philip Gregory too? Oh, I yes, Philip Gregory. Stephen King. Someone says Stephen King. Oh, definitely. Yes, Stephen, Stephen King. King. One of the top ones I was thinking about when I was putting this together. The reason that Matt we Conroy Ann Rice. We just lost her. Uh -huh. Yep. And oh, yeah. Conroy. Yeah. Nicholas yeah. Sparks and right. um, oh, Sparks. and that also um, John Grisham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So when you think about those brands, well, no, I know you have you got to finish the statement. When you think about those <laughs> brands, a lot of the times you go, oh, OK, you know what you expect from them. Like when you pick up a book, you're like, oh, I'm going to have suspense. I'm just going to be lawyer. It's going to be something like that. Right. So you're mm -hmm. like, OK, this is what I want. Readers out there. Why do you pick these brands of authors? Because you know what you're going to get. Exactly. Like if you if you go to a Marriott, you know what you're going to get. If you go to a hotel that's not branded, you don't know what you're going to get. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And that is why it is important for us as authors to have brands. There were three authors that I thought of. Uh, Tom Clancy, Stephanie Myers, and of course, J.K. Rowling, because come on, people, that yeah. show. Branding. That's branding. Yeah. Now, the reason I picked those three authors is because, well, number one, uh, they have clothes. J.K. Rowling has clothes, plays, and a movie. Stephanie Myers actually owns a movie production company, as well as having books. Yes, she has the Stephanie Myers, and she's partnered with somebody else, but she actually makes movies now mm -hmm. after Twilight. And then we have Tom Clancy, who went into video games and Why consulting. Oh, yes, and he consults for the Naval Academy and he for did. the intelligence community because he wrote those books. So that's our point today is like books are a jump off point. You can use it to make a bigger brand. You don't have to always just be an author. You can, and that's fine, and go with that. Or you can use it to expand it and make a bigger brand. Now, we're poets, so I've, yes. I've been curious. Y'all, hang with me. I'm sure this is not as fun as y'all thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> hang with us. Hang with us. No, we're no fun. We're poets, so I just, I'm curious. I've, I've always wanted to know this question. I'm a bit of a narcissist, so I want to know. <laughs> what do you think a poet has as a brand? Like, what do you think they do? For when you brand? envision a poet in a brand, what, what do you envision? Well, it depends on the poet, because uh, I know yeah. some very fine ones here in the Pacific Northwest. So okay. uh, some write about environmental issues. Um, there's, if he's gone out of my head, of course, very famous Stafford down in Oregon. Uh, he's passed gone, but he was famous for his prose and his poetry. And I have wonderful friends up here who write. Uh, one has lived in Alaska, so some of the things she writes about beautiful imagery and I like poetry, it's a challenge for me, but I have a lot of friends who are poets because they help me with my words. I listen to how they, uh, you know, it's funny, I also listen to rap because um, it's a different listening kind of thing. Uh, I actually watched that show on learning how to rap. I can't remember it, but it, you know. Oh my I, God. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I got so fascinated, it was like idol. 
and watching these kids come on and do their final thing. I, I finally got it. I said, wow, he just, those words just come out. I can't believe it. Do I'll, you, never, I'll never do that. But occasionally I'll write a poem. Uh, <laughs> do you ladies, uh, Winona J, do you guys know what, I think it's pronounced reggaeton is? Reggaeton? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. <laughs> I just watched the Queen of Flow and I oh, really flop. got into the lyrics and the, and right. the it was beautiful. I mean, okay, I love it. How did you not dance the whole time? That's yeah, what I want to do. Just be sweating out. You'll make it look in the regular. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. And then you got to do that little, little twist with the, with the yeah, hip. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So we're back to being professional. We are going to try. It's really not working out. <laughs> okay. So, well, no, that does have the saying, right? about authors and their brand. And her saying is, I'm not gonna say she's the narcissist and she's giving me an evil eye, I can feel it. Well, no. I know, I was not. I was looking at the, I was looking at the audience. It's giving an evil eye. If you were actually gonna stop and let me say it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we can engage with our reader the way that they want to be engaged with. By the way, I wanna quickly say though, the chat has been amazing. Yes. I love Maya Angelou. When someone said that, I was like, yeah. Yes. I, I, we wish we could have her brand of poetry. <laughs> yeah, we wish. One day we we pop go. poets. But, so we wanted you to engage with your reader any way that they want to engage with you, right? So that could be audiobooks, right? Because some people, like, I, I love audiobooks, right? I could put it on, I can continue to do my housework or type or do, or do my business while still listening to a book. So it's important. And when I'm talking about the sales, about last year and the sales for audiobooks. Oh my goodness. So you guys, last year, Actually, audiobooks was on track to make a billion dollars as an industry in three more years. But in 2020, it reached a billion and then went by it wow. in 2021. So it more than tripled the amount of money that it made in 2019 in one year. In one year. And that came straight from a literary agent. So she was like, y'all, if you do not have audiobooks or audiobook rights, now is the time to find it. <laughs> to good get, to know. Get. Good to know. Well, I can also tell you from someone who has eye trouble that it is a great venue to read the books because I can only read so many minutes at a time before my eye gives out because I have no tears in one eye. And so that gives me that, that oh, that stage to listen. And if I miss something, I can go back and pick it up and listen again. So mm -hmm. great. <laughs> And I, I have people that I love that have dyslexia. And mm -hmm. so audiobooks are just wonderful for that, for that. So what is what is your brand of poetry? And do you create your own audiobooks yourself? So we, we are do pop have poets. Audiobooks. We are pop poets and we write literary life guides. Some people would call them anthologies, but we just can't call them anthologies. Because let me be honest, when you hear anthology, you're like, oh my you goodness. Go, oh, I'm about to go to sleep. Oh, okay, what, what, what? Our what are anthology do you know? <laughs> <laughs> so so we call out life guys right because we're right. we had to have a fleshy name so for the readers out here um when people ask you to come to like poetry readings or when a book comes out and it's a, a that when a movie comes out and it came from a book or an audio book comes out why did you go to support that or do you go to support that let's start with that it's probably for me it would be the content or, or the uh, the uh, the interest that I have in the subject matter, or whatever you know, or flat out curiosity. I mean, I've read stuff I would have probably never picked up from being in book clubs mm -hmm. and having suggestions. Mm -hmm. So you know, mm -hmm. never close your mind to a genre. <laughs> Ooh, That's right. That. We read everything. Are yep. you gonna Are you gonna give us some of your pop poetry? Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so now we're at the section where we're going to talk about ourselves. <laughs> right. So here we go. <clears throat> Do you guys mind? Here we go. No. It no. won't be nearly no. as many questions. <laughs> it's not even an active or more fun. <laughs> so, okay. so uh, we are one of the 18th most interviewed authors in the world. Guess we're on a list with Oprah, y'all. Oprah is number one, and we're on the at the bottom of that list. Like, I don't care. I don't care if I was 150. <laughs> I would claim it. I would claim it. <laughs> We have over a thousand interviews um, and we got those thousand interviews in like five years. Um, and then we do magazines and uh, docu-series and documentaries and audiobooks and two award shows. 
and that is just a sample of how we took out poetry and tried to expand. And also we have merchandise that, that we sell with our sayings on it. So when she said magazines, y'all, I will really, really want to tell y'all about the magazine. This, people, What's is the 25 Hottest Authors magazine. Indie Authors, Artists, and Advocates. Advocates. So this was 2019. This is Gazella Rowe. She was our cover. She's a BBC producer, and she runs the Audiobook Radio Network in, in the UK. UK. But anyway, so we got, we started off, let, I'm going to start off with our story here. So we started off. And we had a book signing and 17 people arrived. I mean, that's the normal book signing. Like, I think that's the reality for everyone. Like not that many people show up unless you're like got a true brand. And uh, let's just say my other co-authors were highly disappointed. Yes. I thought we did a few more. And then after that, there was something said that completely changed how we viewed everything. My co-author over a lovely bourbon, because we love our bourbon, um, said, sweetie, you'll never have a national tour because you're just not that big. And I'm not coming back to any more of these things. Because you're just not what? That not big. big. You're, not, you're oh, not big enough. That's so you'll, never, you'll never get a national tour. But she was being honest. Like, she just wanted to tell me the truth. And I looked at her and I thought to myself, well, dang, I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> Oh, um, <laughs> so I learned something kind of cool, how to write a pitch letter. Turns out a pitch letter is a lot like a query letter. And I wrote 6,000 of them you and said 6, sent 000. them out. 6,000 pitch letters in three months. What is a pick letter? A pitch letter? Pitch, pitch letter. letter. <laughs> so a pitch letter, who's a writer here? Raise your hand real quick. All of you. All right. All right. Y'all want to explain what a query letter is? Who wants to explain it? Three elements of a query letter. Yeah. Well, the three elements, the main thing is you're sending out a letter to um, either an agent or a publisher to get them interested in reading your full work of what, your manuscript. Right. That's basically what you're trying to do. Exactly. So a query letter normally starts with an, something nice and it's a bit of a hook. And then you would talk about yourself. And you talk about why you're a good fit for the literary agent. A pitch letter starts with a hook, and then you talk about why you're a good pitch, why you're a good segment, why you would be a good segment for a television show, radio show, podcast. podcast. And then you tell them about yourself, and you do it in a page or less. Doesn't that sound really familiar for writers? <laughs> yes. I was like, oh, that's all it is, right? Six thousand of them later, we got how many interviews? A hundred and how many? Twenty-five. And twenty-five. Yep. 125. That's and she, over 10%. That's pretty good. I think. Right, right. And she said, what is the worst thing they can say? No, or don't answer me back? Okay. Next person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next I mean, person. Honestly, we write. How many, how many no's do we get? I mean, well, for your books, right? How many we sent out query letters and there's no or nothing? Oh yeah. My favorite one is when they just never answer you back. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, sorry. So like that was the beginning of our story. And then, so then after that, we came, um, we did those 125 interviews. And oh. since we had to get together as a group, we were sitting there and I was taking an audio engineering class. I looked at Jade and Jade looks at me and she goes, we should do something fun. And I said, yeah, we should. And then I was like, oh, I need a grade. Let's start a podcast. <laughs> That's literally how it began. And the yep. woman's cave was born. It's the first one we got. So we started a podcast. Now we have three, four, four. Well, the women's cave or the and i thought podcast the writing class your favorite one the ladies tale podcast and then of course we have meet hollywood monday where we interview well the ladies tale podcast and meet hollywood monday are almost redundant in a way but we interview like producers screenwriters. directors and screenwriters um okay moving on so we don't spend up all this time in the rest of our chatty so this is what actually happened with our brand. So I got a little bored and Jade, what did I do? And, and then she said, well, I, I need to do something else. We, we need to do other things. So she had this book, right? That we were supposed to be writing another one of the And I Thought series books. And this, and this story just would not get out of Winona's head. And she kept being like, I'm trying to write this other thing. And I'm like, well, just write it. It needs to be written. Because if the characters are talking to you, they're not going to stop talking to you until you write the story. Okay, we've all had that. Right? <laughs> and we'll not do it. You're on dead. Like, we don't, the characters don't care. They're like, like me. So she did that. But how did she do it? I don't know. I wrote a script. My first ever TV script. 
By the way, that TV script last year got pitched to Apple. Hey, but I mean, obviously we didn't get it, but we but, didn't get it, but still huge thing, right? Never wrote a whole script in our whole life. But yeah, so she wrote it. And then we were like, well, this is nice. And we sent it to one of our friends and she said, oh, well, I'm a producer. Let's do a table read. And then the Ladies Tale podcast was born because we did a table read. And then what was born, Monona? Then out of that, someone was like, oh, I wish I could be a Hollywood manager. And that's what it's about, Hollywood talent managers, because we were on tour a lot and we have four managers. And well, they were on tour with us. So we were like, oh, this would be fun. We ended up making a board game out of this. So this is called The Managers. <laughs> so you are you're amazing. Amazing. You get to run around the board. You're so outside the box. You get to run around the board and be a Hollywood, Hollywood manager. manager. So you're and all competing for the same talent. <laughs> and the person who gets their person to the premiere and dress and everything, they're the winner with the most amount of money. But like you could steal like clients from each other, it's swap fun. out bad clients. It's it's fun. It's fun. That's what I made my dad play. It. I was like, Dad, you're sitting down, you're playing this game with us. That's how it's gonna be. And he's like, okay, where's where's my bird? So, so last year, he's like, <laughs> last who won? Year, who won? Uh, I think has won three times in a row. I don't understand. Like, you have to develop talent in it because, like, one of the man, one of the things that managers occasionally do is develop talent if they really believe in. Starting it. to get ready. So one of the things that they really occasionally do is develop talent. And so that means that you're putting your own time and energy into it. Every time she gets to develop talent, when they're like swap out talent, she's like, mm, that's gone. And I'm like, oh my goodness, do you see how much money they're going to give you in the end? Mm -mm, she's not investing in talent. That's how she's going. feel like nervous about skiing tomorrow. Um, so Janet, I, I do see uh, that you were talking about it's hard to get audio books. Yeah. I did a Kickstarter uh, campaign for both of them. This thing's been out for over a year. It's Norway and World War II, but I know Chris Humphreys. He was here last year reading some sexy stuff for us, but I've met him at conferences here in the Pacific Northwest, and it is amazing. Uh, he, I just finished another Kickstarter, uh, and it'll come out in April. But it is hard because it's expensive, and yeah. especially to get good quality uh, people. He not just narrated, he acted it. And yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, we, I, I have a big dream. I put it into Audible. I said, you just did, you know, the Audi Awards, which is like, you know, Oscars. And he said, don't do you think they'll pay attention in India? Look, you deserve to be recognized that he put a lot of work in. This thing is a huge baby, the US thing affair. It's over 22 hours. <laughs> But I'm getting really good, uh, really good reviews, uh, especially on Chirp, because if you do find a way voices, non-exclusive with Audible, you are everywhere. And okay, so, so you, you just took, you just you took just part of our whole, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, go, go, go ahead and tell them, tell them, tell them, yes. Well, the thing is that, you know, the hard part is, um, you know, I would get the, the things loaded up. And so Chirp will, uh, Chirp is one of the ones and that's associated with BookBub. And I applied for a, uh, what they call a featured deal. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. first in July, and I didn't get it. And then I realized I needed to fill out more information. So I did get a publisher's weekly, uh, you know, really good review as a novel and I had other stuff. So. I was accepted. It went live, I think, the 15th of October. I sold 425 audiobooks the first day. And it was oh up. My God. I know. And it was up for a month. So I sold a total of 778 audiobooks. That is crazy. That's incredible. Amazing. It is incredible. And I don't know if it's the subject. It's everyone, all the reviews say, I never heard about this. That's right. Uh, uh, Norwegians tell me, I'm glad, to, thank you for telling the story. And uh, so I'm excited that he'll do uh, Quizzling. He's going to do it in March. He's go, supposed to go to London this month because he has his own book coming out. I have to tell you guys, when you find a narrator that you love, yes, we just like stick with it. I mean, right. our, our yeah. narrator has been... I, has been amazing. Amazing. Has been amazing. Now she has her own podcast. Like she interviews authors, she interviews creatives. 
and she is an amazing lady and i'm so glad she took a chance on us and what's yeah. her, she's like i'm so glad you guys took a chance on me we were like we had no put it in the chat so we can see the name <laughs> yes uh, yeah um, so I'm also going to mention right here that uh, we have a YouTube channel, which we will eventually put in the chat at some point. And on that YouTube channel, we have actual interviews with people specifically to teach you about like how to get an audio book, mm -hmm. why you may or may not want to choose ACX. And it's from a person that's an audio book narrator. Right. Also, I want to mention right here, if you go to www.andipoitlady.com, <laughs> and you will see we have um, a, like a class, what is it called? class on there it has called conferences and workshops you just click that button uh -huh. and it'll take you to the conferences workshop section you can see how to become a usa today bestseller from an indie person from a person who actually has done it like four or five times yeah like that sort of stuff that's uh -huh. all and it'll teach you more about like the brand and stuff and that is our little extra we like to give when we go to conferences is you go see these videos and see them again and again and these are real professionals y'all these are people that literally we're just like i can't believe you came back and did this for us right like yeah. the founder <laughs> of pitch wars is yes. one of the people oh, yes. Yeah. Wow. yeah so and brenda drake and so oh, we were like a sweetheart and a half and we're like i can't believe you you came back it's a time out of your busy schedule to do this for us so y'all really that's a really good resource i use it i still uh -huh. use it right and we did the interview <laughs> <laughs> Um, so also I want to say with find a way, one of the great things that mm -hmm. we learned is because um Scott Brick and Johnny Heller do a yes. workshop and we're we are the we go be the, like the people and they, they let us come be, be like people there. We hang out, it's fun. We learn a bunch of stuff because it's yes. just a bunch of audiobook narrators talking what? about how they want people, they want authors. I was like, we can't find authors to write audio to you know read for. And we're like, Y'all can't find authors because I know authors looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, one of the things that you found we found out is that find a way is one of the few places where you can get into libraries and libraries pay full right. price That's for cool. your book still and they all your audio book for your audio book right. so you can, like, when you go to amazon they'll give you a tiny little kickback and everybody gives you like a, a small royalty but um they will always pay full price if your book is 20 bucks they're paying 20 dollars per book with a full with the full um, royalties. That's uh, yeah, I out. found that because a couple libraries bought the deal. Now, the fun thing is, too, they list a bunch of stuff on Find Away Voices. It doesn't mean your book is there. So I contact, well, one of the things, because I joined the, I'm an audio producer, I can't believe it, but I joined the program so I can get a good rate for entry into the Audis. And so I've been listening to wonderful podcasts. Uh, from the organization. One of them was about um, Storytel, which apparently has bought Find A Way Voices. It's yes, mm -hmm. they just did. We used to know the owner of Find A Way. He was really cool. <laughs> like, yeah. We liked him a lot. But I'm glad he, he made profit. I'm glad so. he sold it, though. He that made profit. profit. Him. profit. Well, look, yeah. when, as soon as he sold it, we were like, dollars in the pocket, huh? <laughs> we're excited. <laughs> we're excited for you. Um, well, the other one was uh, Next Story which is Scandinavian. Of course, I'm targeting that audiobook because it's about Norway. And so I approached them first and then we did a little back and forth with Find Away Voices. So now it is listed and uh, we'll see what happens with that. But it's such a learning curve. I mean, talk about you know COVID and being stuck in your house. You know, that's what I've been doing all year is really pinpointing, really focusing on that. I want to get back to writing about the Pacific Northwest, but I people are buying paperbacks of both yes. those novels. Yes. And that's blowing me away. Yes. So, they have yeah. time. They have time. So I, I want to take the segue right here. Because it yeah. was given. Because it was given. And we never do segues. <laughs> so we're talking. Okay. You both know we don't do segues. <laughs> we don't. Okay. But uh oh and Patricia also knows. Who else knows? Okay. Well, no, knows. Anyway, not important. So the other thing is like you gave me the segue while you're at, while we're in the house during COVID. So quickly, I'm going to run through this so that we can read stuff. So while we were in the house during COVID, I had a thought. Um, can you grab my thought? Okay, I was thought. like, Ooh, okay, first of all, we have the script thingy and we did the Ladies Tell podcast. Wait, it was partially my thought. You can't that have, you can't thought. have, she can't have the full credit for this one. It was partially my thought because this is what <laughs> I said to her. One day I said, people love sayings right the internet's full of like quotes and stuff and inspirational funny sayings saying people love saying wait we wrote books we have a whole book full of sayings that we can then trademark that we can then trademark and or put on the back of things so while we were in 
doing the whole COVID thing, I was like, I want clothes that I can wear because we go to red carpets and stuff sometimes. And also, because it was COVID, y'all, we were just walking around in the neighborhood, right? Or going to the park and walking around and seeing people like far away, but close enough. So right. we did this. So yes. we made a dress. <laughs> it's a dress and that it has, has matching tennis shoes. And now and we has, have over 90 pieces of clothes that represent either our brand. Came from this book cover. This uh, came from our book covers. Check it out, girls. Yeah, there you yes. go. Oh, and then that? that's the purse. Yeah, that. I love that. I love that. See, and we that. We have our own swag shop now. Absolutely. Yeah. And that is really important. Is it important to wear people, other people's brands? Absolutely. People should support other people. But one or two days out of the week, why aren't you wearing your own thing? You have a book full of things. I know you have some funny from some funny lines. I have you my own here. art on my clothes. This is hey, my exactly. art. Exactly. And then what do we do? We put them on backs of t-shirts. We put them on clothes. We put them on tennis shoes. We put them on mugs, right? What is this? This is, there's, uh, there's a lady that I know and she does the sketch art for tattoos, right? So she's a like indie artist that nobody really knows about. And I said, I will purchase original art from you if you let me put my sayings on them. So I'm supporting this, we're supporting this other lady and we're like, hey, yes. I, Bang them. She drew this, and then I put the rambling thoughts of mindless minds, which is a a title of our book. But now people look at it and they look at my shoes. And they go, "Ooh, rambling thoughts of mindless minds. I like it. Where did you get it? Oh, business card. Here's, here's my swag shop. And also, yeah, it's a title of one of my poems. And they're like, I would read that poem. Well, then you can also go to that same website and go follow it and go get the book that is in. Okay. And then I got really, really bored because you and know we and we have questions though. Okay, okay. Yeah, and we no, got really we, bored, and then this is what we did. We we made <gasps> one. What? We were like, you why guys not? are a trip, man. You're a <laughs> and we call it you we call it the liquid. Yes, <laughs> we call it literary liquid. Because we <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> we already had flask that said, and I thought being grown oh, up was easy. easy. Yeah. And then we had the shot glasses, and then we had the stuff that goes with it, right? And then we have like bourbon glasses to hold the cigar that said the same thing. And so we were like, we need to put something in them. And we couldn't figure out how to get a bourbon thing done. So we figured out how to eat the wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we put wine in, it doesn't matter. Either way. But y'all, we have seen your questions, Ruthie. We have, we saw your question. Pitch letters, what is a good hook? Please tell her the hook that got us so many, that hook, London <laughs> television. Please tell her. So seven months from our, seven, from um, having 17 people at our book signing, we got uh, London television. So we literally flew over to London. Now we do it every year and we do a UK tour. But um, we flew over to London to be on TV. And the hook that I used was a sentence from a, uh, the end I thought being grown up was easy. When a man no, beat you. No, no. No, and I thought divorce was bad. When a man beat you with his words, you need to leave. And I, um, and I thought divorce was bad. It has a lot of stuff on getting over emotional abuse and picking up your life and figuring out how you're really going to, you know, go on and have a new relationship, have a new job, have new self-confidence in yourself and find your safe harbor within yourself. So um, yeah, we got on television in London for uh, on mental health, the, the mental health show. And we've gone back multiple times. We go back, we used to go back every year. And that's been kind of cool. And um, you have to tell them because, all right, so you know how when you look at an email, right? That just pull, goes on your phone. You see like the subject and you see the first two lines. Well, none of us like the subject in the first two lines has to hook the people, right? Because they're busy. They're busy. They're, they don't have time to just keep on reading your email. If it's not, it sound boring. I don't, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I have to book shows. But if it, if it sounds inciting and you grab them in, like, like a hook on a rap song, you don't forget it. No, it doesn't matter. You don't forget it. If it pulls you in, then you've got it. Exactly. Because there yeah. is the, most people get about eight hundred to a couple of thousand, eight hundred for a small show. Like the one in Sacramento gets about eight hundred a day. But the thing is that like they don't even open them unless that subject line in those two hooks were, in those two sentences were. Kathy, you were saying yes. I want to know where we can get your products. I want <laughs> what that wine. I've just got to see what all you got up there. Where do we go? <laughs> Well, you can go to our website, uh, andithoughtladies.com, and okay. you can go to our old website, and that's like the more expanded website of www.andwethought.com. 
and that'll have like we yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay okay so like there's one that's like cafe press which is like more of a swag shop and then there's cow yes. our cow cow page which is more of like an actual clothing line with shoes and heels and like you can get dressed head to toe in our clothes yeah <laughs> if you want to. Um, actually our clothing okay so pitch letters also when you do pitch letters a lot of you do historical fiction yeah the error of history that you researched you are now an expert in yes. because you have a book in it so we've actually we actually take on five clients a year if that's it for <laughs> pr and we help them land multiple tv shows and we also help them ex like get their brand like find their niche like one person was read, read, read like they did beach stuff beach romances so we made them more like of a beach author and helped her redo her table for book signings and stuff so she stood out right so she was so, there with her big sunglasses and a fabulous hat and people just want to come over to see you like why why are you looking like this and then you can tell them more about yourself there was something else. but now we've talked enough about ourselves do you guys want to hear some of this poetry yes yes yes, yes. all righty oh Oh, oh, wait. wait and then I she, picked, she picked the one that made us famous. Y'all want to hear the one? Nah, I'm Yeah, kidding. I do. Right. I don't have a good one. So, a shiner. What's her problem is my name. Propriety was my claim to fame. Charity for others was my thing. Who had time for anxiety and worrying? Friends flocked to me for my good sense. I saved every dollar, yen, and pence. What is her problem is my name. I live and a transformation game. I am healing, I am dealing, yet the whispers sound ever crisper. When will she change back? She's mentally cracked. They remember when on any day with nostalgia, there was a time we couldn't have been proud her. Why does she spend to be happy? Why does she cry? It's so sappy. I will answer all of you now. I am broken, beaten, and bruised. I don't like the reality this has exposed. I ask myself, am I weak every day? If so, how and in what way? I, bond, I ponder when I stop being the girl you love and know. I want to change from his mold. I'm still wounded and bloody. I hate your patronizing smiles and speech. I disapprove of how they see me as a social leech. I need time to find me. I admit the years ha that have passed. I don't know why the effects have lasted. I beg you to believe me, the memories are repressed. I say this because these injuries have festered. I know that sadness will jump out at any time. I know my emotions as an improper crime. I cry not to cave in amongst my thoughts. I act foolish to chase off all my pensive haunts. I ramble so no one will know my bones weren't set. I use the cast of jovialness. I recuperate in a normalcy that breaks my brain callously. I disregard rules, not to seem cool. I learn they don't apply unless he gave me a black eye. Oh my God. Wow. I'm gonna follow so up. powerful. Oh, I've got tears in my eyes. Wow. Oh my Girls, that's up. amazing. Thank you with not for me and then i'm gonna try we're gonna to have some happy poems i'm gonna go find some okay, okay. she's gonna go find my little find happy poem <laughs> <laughs> not for me is the one that i used in the pitch letter that you guys had asked about before so when a man beats you with his words you need to leave when a man beats you with his fists you need to leave when a man gaslights you into thinking it's all your fault you need to leave there's been times they say, I love him. He will change. I need to do better. I'm scared, but I'm not leaving my house. We hear excuses saying he's more important than me, your own child. Last but not least, saying for the sake of the children? How easily it is said, but honestly, sometimes it's only about you and him. That's how we perceive it. Do you see the fear in their eyes? Do you notice the tears in their voice? While hearing with ears that no longer listen, mama, we need to go, mama, why do you stay? Along with their hopes slipping away and becoming possibly as angry as he. Sure, 
staying capes a roof over their heads, but at what cost to their hearts and at what damage to their minds? I don't mean to offend, but sometimes this for the sake of the children is only an excuse. Don't blame me for telling a true cost of abuse. I heard these lines before because I'm one of those children who realized it was never about me. Hmm. I have emotional scars to show it was not for me. Mm. Happy folks. Oh so we can leave out of here happily. All right? gonna, thank you. We're going to leave out of here happy. We got oh. five minutes, y'all. So okay. leave us happy. Yes. We're going to leave you happy. Okay. Once upon a WTF. I can't believe you chose this one. All right. This is so fun one. I love this one. <laughs> if Cinderella had my life, the pumpkin would have still had seeds inside that drip drip down from the ceilings. The dress would be radiant white on the first day of my period. The seeds would align to make a slimy, shimmering line of beads gunking up my hair. And a one time, one day, one use only style. It would mean tearing up, tearing up as the wind came whipping in through the windows that can't be shut. The distracted, <laughs> my I'm sorry. The horses would see cheese in the middle of the road and get distracted as we pulled up to the castle steps. The royal cats would hiss and the mice would run for their lives, leaving me hanging on to the slippery insides of a pumpkin door, my dress flapping in the wind, screaming, help! At the top of my lungs, my rescue would come, but only at the hands of a human toe with traveling hands. As I sweat at those hands trying to expertly cup what ought not be touched, my glass heel would break with a resounding sound before I got into the bell room, but it would work out. And I would walk in there with a gracious but awkward limp. The prince would have to meet the curious girl with the shiny curly gooey hair, but a sheen like a diamond ring and smelled like pumpkin pie, wafting off her every inch of her. He would lead me to the dance and card, he would lead me to the dance floor and fill up my card with suave movements and wouldn't connect, we would connect over improvements to his favorite childhood recipes that I could bake. My pumpkin would get flat at 11.56. <laughs> and a few minutes later, it would turn back to its natural state. If only Cinderella would have lived a day in my shoes. Housework would turn into yard work and light construction. My steps with sisters would be mean and beautiful. And I would be the literal black sheep of the family. The prince would scour the kingdom for my stepsister and her red bottom shoe. I would happily live in the kitchen, turning out their favorites of every meal, writing in my spare time. I would retire to a cottage and have many tales to tell. The best selling one would be about a pumpkin with a busted tire, a busted vine tire on the side of the road while I was standing there in rags. When I read for the royals at their home, the prince would immediately offer me the position of courtesan, <laughs> which I would animately refuse. With a backhand slap to the, his face, two years later, he would ask me to be his second wife because he misses my cooking in our late night chats over great snacks. And I would turn him down and return to writing a bestseller about the time I almost was a prince. Mm -hmm. On second thought, a best Cinderella would want to be me. <laughs> Thank you, you guys. You have been, all have been amazing. We have one minute. Any questions, thoughts, concerns? Uh, you all, I, I want to know your backstory. What got you, quickly, what got you all started in all of this? Because- Winona begged me kicking and screaming, right? Because I am I, not a writer. I, I started writing five years ago when she dragged me because and I made- She's now the poet of the year. <laughs> I know. And so I made her return to poetry. I said, Winona, you need to write poetry. It's so beautiful. Your poetry is so beautiful. And she's like, oh, so you just want me to be broke. Genre pain. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I write genre. I've been and I, and I said, well. but you you have to. And she was like, so what would I even name this so-called poetry <laughs> book? And that's like, and I thought the voice was bad. Bam! <laughs> made her career. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> you all are you all are awesome. I'm I'm telling you, your energy, I want that. I want that. I want to bottle it. Maybe you'll come out with an energy drink that we can oh, have that. <laughs> there's anything you guys can't do that's amazing well we need Amen. to get all these websites mandy to you know so we can check out later but oh, thank yeah. you girls oh, yeah. oh.
And y'all, I just have to say, please don't be shy about using that contact us button right there on our, we want to hear from you. We would love to interview you. So please contact us so we can do said things. And Grace, we see you. Thank you for coming. Man, thank you. Thank you, girls. This will all be up on, on my Kathy L. Murphy channel on YouTube after the event. And if you want to put it up on yours, I'll send you the video. Absolutely. Okay? This will okay. be so fun. We'll be like, see, we do, we do things. I would like to go <laughs> with you to London sometime. Absolutely. Just to be with you on that trip would be a trip. Amen. <laughs> Well, bye, y'all. Yeah, I can actually drink some of that wine. I think that. That wine is just awesome. <laughs> oh, my God. I got to order. I don't even drink, you know, but it's just so <laughs> cool. <clears throat> oh, my gosh, you guys. Thank you so much. We've got to go because we've got a, another panel coming right up. So, y'all, thank you. Winona Jade, I love you, girls. Right. You're inspiring to us all. Thank you so much. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs>